And all who are thirsty And all who are weak. Father, what a blessing this day has been And we pray that you just uh, continue to move Through the power of your spirit in our hearts And speak to us We pray in the name of Jesus Amen, Amen. So I'm talking about the man of prayer And, and uh, we're going to just touch on a few subjects about this And then... Uh, Sing and take communion together and finish with song and get out filled up, ready to serve the Lord. And as you can see, the, the theme uh, of this conference has been about the man that God uses or the man God uses. And, and we want to be used by the Lord, right? Yes. Okay, so we want to, you know, look at the Bible, look at the guys God uses, and we want to be those guys. And, and I believe God has given us as men, a role, a unique role that no one else fills. And, and I think in our society, in our day, women tend to know their role. Uh, not always, but certainly in the church, they tend to, to accept that role that, hey, this is who God has made me to be. And yet in society, we're, we're kind of forced as men to, to maybe be put down or whatever when, you know, we've, we've been given a role. God has given us the role of leadership, not because we're better Certainly not because we're smarter, <laughs> but he has given us a heart and he's made us a certain way. And, and uh, so we want to take that role. And, and we've heard some different studies on that. And now I'm going to talk about prayer. And again, like Nathan said, I could just say, all right, guys, pray more. But that, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to look at the early church and we're going to look at the book of Acts. And we're going to see that the guys in this book and really the women, too, but we're focused on the guys. Uh, they were men of prayer. So to be a man God uses is to be a man who prays. So I, I want to start, and I'm going to just jump around in different places in Acts. And we're at Acts 1.14 to begin with. And you know the story. We've got uh, Jesus telling them to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon them and gives them the power that they need. And uh, so they're told... Uh, to wait. And, and we really kind of get here in Acts 1.14, them waiting. It says, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They continued in one accord. And that just means they're in agreement with, we need you, Lord. It's not one accord that we're all the same or think the same because we're a, a different, diverse group of men. And I, I thank God that he saves people, all kinds of people. I like my church to be diverse. I like all kinds of different backgrounds. I, I think that's awesome. But when we come together, we come in one accord. We believe in Jesus Christ and we're seeking him. And we're praying because we need his help. You need to talk to him. Now, prayer, the very beginning, the thought is we're communicating with the Lord, with our commander in chief. Again, we're guys, so we can kind of think of war stuff. You know, I, I like to read war books. I would never want to be in war. I'd never want to go through what they go through. But for something about it, just, you know, guys giving their lives for someone else. I just like that. And, and you know, I was reading a World War II book and they're talking about communication. And remember, it's not like our modern communication. They would send a guy out to a top of a mountain back there in uh, Europe, World War II, you know, through the forest. And they'd go up and, and their job was to get on a hill and oversee the enemy and be able to then call back the coordinates of where they need to shoot, you know, the ordinance and, and to, to get them. And, and, but to do that, they not only one guy would sneak out there and find a place, he had a guy with him with telephone wire. He had, you know, spools of telephone, hundreds of feet, hundreds of yards of telephone wire. And they're just putting it and going through the forest until they find the place. And I thought, man, what a job, you know, and then that guy, his job's done and he gets back and gets out of there and hopes no one finds the, the wire or him. But you needed that communication. And we need the communication with the commander in chief. If you think you know, you really don't. God knows. 
If there's something I have learned through the years and am still learning, is I know a whole lot less than I think I know. And I am desperately in need of the one person who knows everything. And that's our Lord and Savior. 1 Kings 21, you remember King Ahab, evil king. And of course, at one point, he wants his neighbor's vineyard, Naboth. And because uh, it's next door, it's close and he wants it. Naboth is like, you know, this is my family plot. Uh, God gave us the land. I, I can't give it up. Even if you're going to pay me good money for another. This is my family's land. I mean, we're generations, hundreds of years. Uh, and, and Naboth, of course, uh, he goes and he pouts. Good example of how we're not to be men. He goes and he pouts and his wife has to, you know, take care of it and have Naboth killed so he can have the vineyard. And that's kind of where we pick up 1 Kings 21, verse 17. It says, The word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, So right there, the word of the Lord. God spoke to him. All right, he's listening to the Lord. God spoke to him. And, and then he's told the next verse, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Naboth where he has gone down to take possession of it. Now, now listen, God is speaking. Elijah has this relationship. He's told the next thing, all right, arise and go down. We want God directing us, don't we? I'm in prayer. I, I start every day with God. All right, this is the day you direct me. Now, I don't always like the direction. I'll be honest. Sometimes I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> really? <laughs> I had different things planned today, but... You, Still, God is directing. I want God to direct and put me where he wants me to be. And he says, arise and go down. And then he tells him where exactly he's at. Verse 19, you shall speak to him saying, thus says the Lord. Have you murdered and also taken possession? And where you shall speak to him saying, thus says the Lord in the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. So, he tells him, I mean, he knows, Elijah knows because God is telling him, you go give him the message, I know you murdered Naboth. Now, how does Elijah know that? Because God told him. I believe the all-knowing God, if we're in prayer, God's going to tell us things that we do not know. I, I believe that. I expect that. I expect God to give us insight into things. And I need to know things. And sometimes it's just God, hey, this is it. But he also tells him the future, by the way. You're, you're going to die. Dogs are going to be licking your blood. <laughs> God telling. This is God speaking. So first of all, these guys back here in Elijah, excuse me, in Acts, uh, they're praying because they need direction. They need to communicate with the Lord. Now, verse 24, the same chapter, says they prayed and said, you, O Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show which of these two you have chosen. Now, what's gone on is in this interim, all right, Jesus died, rose again three days later. He's been with them 40 days. Now, you know, and he said, hey, to wait. So we got like a week, okay? These guys couldn't really wait a week. We got a week and they're already thinking, well, Judas went and hung himself. We need to get another guy in there to be an apostle. And, and they pick, you know, choose two guys, say, well, these two guys seem to be the best choices. Uh, and, and maybe it was the two party system there, too. You know, we got the Republican and Democrat. I don't know which one was which. But they come up with Matthias. And, and you know, there's always been debate. Were these the guys that were meant to be chosen or, or to be put forward? Some people think maybe Paul should have been the apostle. And there are other apostles in the New Testament. We have the 12. Uh, there are the guys that were apostles. Uh, I don't know for sure if Matthias should have been the apostle or not. I, I can't tell you. But I, 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 when I read this, I kind of think they kind of limited God's choice. Right? All right, God, we gave you two guys. Which one is it? Do you ever do that with the Lord? Maybe not in choosing people, but I got to tell you, when I pray so often, I already in my mind am coming up with, all right, Lord, this is the problem. Uh, we could do this. We could do this. We could do this. What one is it, Lord? And I would just suggest that men, we need to listen to the Lord. 
because I have found that usually when I listen, God gives me exactly what's to be done and it's never one of the choices I had. Well, sometimes it is, but rarely. It, I believe that God so often just blows our mind with his plan and his way of doing things. And again, as a guy who, who's getting a little bit older, I look back and the greatest things that have happened in my life have been things that I did not plan out. Some things I didn't even want to happen. And yet God did it because God had a whole different plan and a whole different way of doing things. So that just tells me, it tells us, we need to listen and find out, all right, God, I'm kind of thinking maybe this, maybe this, but Lord, if you have something totally different, then show me what to do. And I believe God will do that. I don't believe God's hiding from us. I don't believe God's trying to keep his will from us. I think God wants us to know. Uh, Acts 2.42, this is just kind of a, a simple one. We all know Acts 2.42 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread, and in prayers. That's what the church did. Okay. We also see in that chapter, they went out and shared the gospel. Pretty simple stuff, right? I, but when I teach that, usually I really get into the first couple things in there. And then I kind of tail off when we get to prayer. You know, yeah, we know. We're all supposed to pray. Listen, church is about prayer. Right? You got that. That's that's. Not hard to figure, right? I believe it's important that we pray privately. I think as a family, we should pray. But I think as a group of men, we should pray too. Now I wanna challenge you guys to get together with men and pray. If you have prayer times in the church, get there. Now I know we're busy, there's lots going on. If you can't make it, you can't make it. But I also know, come on, let's be honest. When it comes to prayer, that, that you think, oh, it's just a prayer meeting. That's not as important. Isn't it? Okay, you, you're just looking at me. Maybe I guess I'm the only ungodly guy who kind of thinks that sometimes. Like, you know, well, if I'm going to miss something, at least it's just a prayer meeting. You know, I didn't miss Sunday or whatever else. But, and I, again, I'm not guilting anyone. I'm not telling you have to, because I know our busy schedule. I miss prayer meetings because I just don't have time sometimes. Okay. But I want us to start thinking about praying as men. And I encourage my men, if you're a guy who is just quiet, then come and just under your breath say amen. Because I think you're part of that prayer then. I really do. I think when we're praying a prayer, when the guy up here is praying a prayer and we're all saying amen, I think we're all praying that prayer. That's how I see it. And you, I mean, because I'm agreeing. I'm like, yes, Lord, do it. I think there's power in that. So I want to encourage us to pray as men, to get together as men. Um, you know, Spurgeon, and I think some of the other 1800s preachers, I think Morgan, same thing. You know, when they were asked, you know, where's the power of this ministry come from? They would go and they would show a room where people were praying. You know, a handful of people praying. Six, seven, ten people, whatever it is. And... Uh, yeah, I know in our church, I really, I see God doing work. And I think it's because we've got people praying. There's, there's people taking time, going aside, and they are just spending time with the Lord. And, and I see things that happen in the body of Christ, in our church specifically, that I'm just amazed. I'm like, how did that happen? Where do these people come from? <laughs> how did that person get saved? I mean, I don't even know. I mean, they didn't like... Sometimes they just show up. Yeah, you know, I came to the Lord and I'm, I just need a place to fellowship. And, you know, can you baptize me? And can you, you know, I'm just like, how did this happen? You know, or, or a ministry, you know, that just comes about. It's, we're praying and God is doing things. And, and I love it that when I can't put my finger on it and say, well, you know, I came up with this plan. Because isn't that kind of the way we do things a lot of times in the church? Well, we're going to reach this group or we're going to reach that group. And so we've got this program and that. Now, listen, if we're trying to reach a group because God's put on our heart to reach a group, that's great. And if he's given us a program to do, that's great. But I think a lot of times it's because we're not praying and we're just trying to come up with something instead of just seeking the Lord. Now, probably one of the best ministries we have going in our church right now is what we call Jesus Pizza. Uh, and it's been, I think, maybe nine or ten years. Uh, Zach here was part of that. Uh, Tristan came to that. Uh, these are some of our young men. But you, you know how it all started? 
or just seeking the Lord. And, and we were doing a little Bible study at the high school at lunch with a couple of, you know, 10 kids, 12 kids. And they told us we can't come in there and do Bible studies at lunch. And, and I just prayed and, and we actually even saw it. You know, I thought, you know, if this is something we have the right to do, I wanted to find out. So I contacted one of the Christian lawyers just to see. I didn't want to have a fighting attitude. And I really put, felt the Lord put on my heart, don't make a big issue of it. And, and so he said, yeah, you know, lunch, they don't, you don't really have much say in that. Uh, I said, okay. So I told the, the young people, I said, hey, we're, we're meeting at my son's lawn a couple blocks down from the school. So you want to come down there? I'll get you pizza and some drinks and we'll do our Bible study there. You know, 10, 12, turned into 25, 30. We, you know, rented a little building, turned into 60, 65, decided, you know, the Lord put on my heart, we need to move back to our church, which is another whole story. I kind of fought that. I didn't think that would work. And now, I mean, we get 150, 200 kids. And uh, I never planned any of that. And people say, well, you're feeding them pizza. Well, I got to tell you, God gave us the money to feed them pizza. My first thought was, how are we going to afford that? You know, we pay probably 3000 a month during the school year. And I guarantee you, when we started this, we did not have 3000 a month to put into that. And uh, we have never, I mean, nine, 10 years, and I, we don't ask. We just, it's just God doing it. And, and God has done a great ministry. Okay. And again, I, I can't even take any credit for it. <laughs> Seeking the Lord. Prayer. Going on. I'm just going to go through these kind of quickly. Acts chapter 3. You know the story. Starting at the beginning, one Peter and John, they go to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. What were they going to do? They're going to pray, right? They see a guy who's lame, who can't walk. He's there begging and God puts on their heart. See, they're, they're not even in a prayer meeting at this point. Okay. They're not, but they're praying men and God puts on their heart. Hey, you know, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Now that takes some guts. Have you ever tried that with someone? Man, I'll tell you, <laughs> I haven't, I can't imagine. I'm sure that they would just fall down and I'd get sued or something. But, but what if the Lord put it on our heart? And, and you know what? Probably it hasn't happened because God hasn't had us do that yet. But what if this week he does? What if you're, all of a sudden you're, you, you've been praying, you've been seeking the Lord and boom, God puts on your heart to do something. He's healed. Well, that of course causes them persecution. Turn to Acts chapter 4. Verse 23, uh, he says, and being let go, they went to their own companions, reported all that the chief priests and elders had said. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. And they go on and they're just praying. They've just been persecuted. They're let go after being threatened. And they know they're going to go back out. They know they're going to get persecuted more. So what do they do? They go. Well, Lord, you're the creator. You're in charge of this. Go down to verse 30. It says, by stretching out, they're still praying. Or actually, 29. Now the Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your Holy Spirit or your Holy Servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They're praying. Grant that you give us boldness. Boldness. You guys need boldness? Yeah, we all do, don't we? Let me say, let's be bold and pray. You know, I talked about prayer meetings. What about praying with people? I, I think Satan hates us to pray with people. And, and often, you know, in a church situation, well, you know, I'll pray for you, brother. I'll pray for you, which is good. But I think maybe we should just stop and pray right there. But I'm going to really challenge you guys. How about praying for people out in society? When you don't know if they're a Christian or not, and chances are they're not a Christian. What if they're, you know, hurting? What if a hard situation? How about just praying? Now, you pray this first. Pray, Lord, give me boldness. I got to tell you, I could tell you stories of being bold, but I, I thought about it. I always like to tell the stories of me being bold, right? Don't you? I don't like to tell the 10,000 times I chickened out. 
So I'm just going to tell you right now, unless you happen to have, unless you're Ray Comfort, you know, most of us are going to chicken out more than we're going to come through. But I, I, want, I want God to give us boldness that we could just stop and pray with. I remember one time, so I'll tell you a good story. Not all the stories I messed up because there's no point in that. But I remember I was getting my oil changed and a guy, we got to talking and, and he had cancer and, and terminal. He's an older guy and, and he was getting ready to go to the doctor. And I said, can I just, can I pray for you? And I prayed for him, just that the Lord would touch him, that the Lord would open his eyes to, to him. I mean, once you start praying, you know, you can kind of pray whatever you want. What are they going to do? Uh, but <laughs> and, you know, later on, he, he came to my house. He went back to the auto place. I mean, we are small towns and said, you know, that guy, who, you know, he's a pastor. Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah, he lives over such a, he came to my house and thanked me for praying. Now, that doesn't always happen, but I got to tell you. I have rarely had someone tell me no when I asked if I could pray for him. I mean, rarely. They, I mean, people even in the world, even if they don't believe in Jesus, even if they think Christianity is nuts, if something bad's going on, they'll probably just take anything. <laughs> just in case, maybe he does have a connection here. I'll take it. Boldness. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, that's where the boldness comes. Guys, it's not us. We're called to be leaders. We're called to be strong but we're not called to pride and we're not called to our own strength. We're called to get our strength from Jesus Christ and depend upon him totally. And then that's where the strength is to go out there and be the, the men that God has called us to be the fathers, the grandfathers, the brother, the sister, the friend, the boss, the employee, whatever it is, we're to be leaders, but it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. The place shook. I wonder what they thought. Now, come on, we're from California. You know, there's earthquakes in Israel too. In California, the first thing I'm thinking if we're praying and start shaking is earthquake. Then I'm going to be thinking, well, maybe the Holy Spirit's moving here. But, but something's happening. That's exciting. Chapter 5. We see Ananias and Sapphira. Again, Peter knew. God told him what was going on. Chapter 6. See, we're, we're moving fast and we'll never go through all of this. Chapter 6. They've got problems. Well, look at chapter 6. We'll just hit verse 4. Acts 6, 4. It says, But we'll give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Problem with feeding the poor. Certain ones are being left out. And, and the guys just say, hey, look. Pick some people. Get seven guys filled with the Holy Spirit. Let them, let them be in charge of that. But we're going to, our focus as the apostles is going to be prayer and the word. Now, we may not be an apostle. We may not be a pastor. We may not be an elder. But I think all of us ought to copy that example, don't you? Well, we have other things to do, and I'm sure there are times they served. But I think we need to put the priority of the word and prayer up there in our lives. Because there's nothing else we can do if we haven't spent that time with the Lord to begin with. I remember seeing a comic in a Christian newspaper one time. And it, you know, it, the secretary opens the door and the pastor's kneeling on the ground praying. And the secretary goes, oh, good, you're not busy. But isn't that what sometimes we think? Listen, studying the word is important, but prayer is as important. Going and, and, and hammering nails in somewhere or, you know, going to your job and doing and all those are all important. But praying is important, too. And since we want to be men of prayer, are we limited on when we can pray? No, you should be praying when you're pounding the nails or when you're handing out the hamburger or, or when you're with the family or when you're, you know, at the sporting event or whatever. You're, we should be praying, right? Everywhere, we should be men of prayer. We need to be men of prayer. Yesterday, I was as working, and uh, we have a family restaurant, and they put me to work one night a week because I'm free labor. And, uh, and, you know, I'm thinking tomorrow, yeah, I'm doing this thing on prayer and prayer. And, you know, I wasn't praying. I'm, and I have all kinds of time to think. It, it doesn't, you know, take me a whole lot of time when I'm wiping up after people you know, and stuff, but I'm thinking, but isn't that like that? I'm thinking, boy, man, we need to be praying, and I'm not praying. 
Well, the Lord got my attention, and I got to praying. But wherever we're at, we can be praying. I, I, true story, I can remember one time, oh, this was when I was young, you know, 100 years or so ago. I, I was playing basketball, and, and I would pray, sometimes while they were driven down court, I would pray for the guy that I was guarding. And just, Lord, open their heart to you, and, or give me a chance to share, whatever. And, and, and years later, one of those guys showed up at church. And it come to the Lord. And one of the guys, I mean, I hadn't even shared the Lord with him, but he was really anti. I was just like, wow. The Lord answered that prayer years later. So, and I could go on. There's so much in Acts we could look at uh, for praying. Uh, let's just be men of prayer. However this is spoken to you, whatever area, uh, it's not about us doing a duty. It's about us being in communication with our Lord and Savior, the one we love. I mean, when you love someone, you talk to them, don't you? I, when I'm gone on a trip, uh, especially in this day and age when we have the computer, I'm, I'm always going on the computer and talking to my wife and my granddaughter. And, you know, just that's, that's a, it's a must. I want to. I want to talk to the Lord too, the one who knows everything, the one who loves me, the one who speaks to me. Isn't it exciting when God speaks to you? Speaks to your heart, man, I need that every day. And so do you guys. Well, that's what I have for you in prayer. We're going to have this blessing, this opportunity to take the Lord's Supper.